there was darkness, and then bang, giving birth to an endless expanding existence of time, space, and matter. Every day, new discoveries are unlocking the mysterious, the mind-blowing, the deadly secrets of a place we call the universe. The solar system. How did it emerge from the oblivion of interstellar chaos? We are made of gas and dust. Today, the sun and planets hold fascinating clues to their origins in a haze of particles so small, they're virtually invisible. The evidence of our past is all around us. But are the titanic forces that created our solar system common throughout the universe? Or are we unique? Our solar system seems to be one of the oddballs. The universe may have countless strategies for crafting stars and planets, but only one could determine how the solar system was made. It begins at a point in time nearly 4.6 billion years ago. A giant cloud of gas and dust floats eerily through a remote arm of the Milky Way, chilled to more than 400 degrees below zero. When it's sitting there all alone, nothing much is happening in a molecular cloud. The temperatures are very low, the particles are moving around very, very slowly. It's just sitting there. But if you have a nearby supernova, an exploding star, it can send a shock wave through this molecular cloud, triggering its gravitational collapse. That collapse is the first step in a long process that brings the place we now call the solar system into existence. Our mission now will be to follow a timeline of the first 700 million years, the epoch in which the solar system formed and stabilized. We start by looking at the sun and its planets as they are today. The evidence of our past is all around us. Uh, the four planets in the inner part of the solar system are made of rock and metal, and the four planets in the outer part of the solar system are these giant balls of gas. So clearly different processes were at play and that tells us something about how we got here. We learn the story, as scientists presently believe it happened, from time zero, the very beginning of our solar system. The supernova explosion not only seeds the giant gas cloud with heavy elements like iron and uranium, the jolt of the explosion gives the cloud a push into the future as wave fronts compress the cloud's gases into a critical mass. That mass begins to collapse under the force of gravity and then it's unstoppable, it's rapid, uh, it's irreversible. It's like a roller coaster reaching the top of its track and speeding down the other side. The collapsing cloud, destined to become our solar system, becomes a virtual theme park of chaotic motion. An amusement park like Knott's Berry Farm is a great place for people to come and experience the kind of motion that happens in the early solar system. There's gravity, there's collisions, momentum, forces. All of those interactions that took place in the early solar system can be found here on all the different kinds of rides. Those interactions intensify in the rapidly collapsing cloud, where gas and dust contracts into dense pockets. Each will become the nursery of a star. When the giant molecular cloud was triggered and started to collapse, a lot of other protostars and a lot of other solar systems were formed at the same time. So our sun actually has a lot of brother and sister stars that formed right around the same time as the sun. The first stages of our solar system's creation are hardly unique. Today, we witness the same thing happening in the Orion constellation, where a giant molecular cloud stretches hundreds of light years across. 
In some places, collapsing pockets are now forming clusters of young stars, which light up the surrounding gas. The circus of motions in the amusement park aptly parallels the movements of space matter that comes together to make the solar system. The most basic of these motions is circular, like a celestial carousel. As the pre-solar cloud collapses, we begin to notice its rotation, a spin that has actually been there from the beginning. The entire galaxy rotates. Everything in the galaxy rotates. Everything is rotating with respect to everything else. And so rotation is part and parcel of the physics of, of stellar collapse. What happens next resembles a spinning ice skater. When she draws in her arms, she spins faster. As gravity draws in the cloud's gas, the cloud not only spins faster, it inevitably flattens into a disk. We can see a similar process at work on Earth, in places like Joe Cariotti's glassblowing workshop in California, where astronomer Laura Danley is observing the action. Joe begins with a round blob of red-hot molten glass. We basically just are taking a solid mass that was round and spinning it. It flattens because it's much easier for the fluid, the fluid of this liquid glass, to collapse in the same axis, along the axis of spinning, rather than try to fight the spin or fight the angular momentum and move closer. And just like in our solar system, if there were planets forming in there, they'd all be in the same plane. Mm -hmm. It's just like the disk of our solar system. Now, it looks kind of elliptical. It's not circular. We think of our own solar system as being circular, but mm -hmm. I think you told me it had to do with there being more mass on one side. So maybe it's kind of like an analog of a binary star forming where you've got maybe extra mass on one side that's also going to form into a star or a brown dwarf or maybe a, just a very massive Jupiter-like planet. Mm -hmm. It's so tempting to touch it, but I'm actually... Oh, no, we can't do that. Idea. Yeah, <laughs> We're not, we can't do that. <laughs> A hundred thousand years after it began, the cloud that will become our solar system has almost entirely collapsed, and its center is glowing with the radiance of an emerging protostar. A protostar is the very earliest stages of becoming a star is when the star is still collapsing down and the energy that it's radiating out is coming from that gravitational collapse. It's still getting hotter because it's getting smaller. It's not doing the nuclear reactions like a star will be doing when it's in its main phase of, of being a star. The emerging protostar begins gobbling up the disk of gas and dust that makes up what's called the solar nebula. So much of it will end up in the sun that what's left over for the planets, moons, asteroids, and even our own bodies is so meager, it's almost a cosmic afterthought. We happen to live on a planet. So the stuff that went into making the planet is very important to us. But it was just a tiny part of the whole mix. This parking lot is a good way of showing how tiny. When you look at the solar system today, the sun is 99.85% of the total mass. So compared with the 500 cars in this parking lot, my car is just about all that's left over for all the planets, asteroids, and moons. And as for the Earth itself, well, that might be comparable to this spare tire, nothing bigger. At a million years after time zero, the solar system's method for sorting out its planet-building material is clear. They're separated by the different temperatures in the disk. Close to the protosun, temperatures above 2,000 degrees vaporize everything. But about five million miles out lies the rock line, where it's cool enough for metals and minerals to turn solid. Much farther out, lies the snow line, where it's as much as 375 degrees below zero, cold enough for water, methane, and ammonia to freeze into ices. 
The early solar system is a little bit like making cotton candy. And to, to show us how cotton candy's made, we have Kathy Wu here to uh, make us a, a delicious treat. First, we take the sugar crystals and we pour that into the heating element. So the heating element in, in this case is, is here in the center. In the case of the solar system, of course, it's that very hot sun in the middle that's melting things that are too close to it. And as that, uh, that hot sun heats up, it starts to melt the stuff that's close to it. Whoa, there it comes. This is now the solar nebula you can see flying around here. On the inside, you actually don't see anything. The inside, it's all molten. And as it gets to the cooler outside, the, the solar nebula starts to condense. And you can see it starting to solidify all over the outside of the solar system where it's cold. You get a line of gaseous stuff on the inside and the solid stuff on the outside. This is also a very good analogy for what those early protoplanets are like. They start to accrete by all sticking together, very much like this cotton candy does, and make larger and larger things coming from these tiny little pieces of, of crystal that are the, the sugar that's in the cotton candy. Thank you.